Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to be making this. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be creating some simple uh, mountain vector illustrations here in Adobe Illustrator. It's going to be pretty quick and pretty easy, but I think it'll be really cool and it'll get you started down the road uh, of creating some different types of mountain illustrations in the future. This is kind of the first step. Now, if you enjoy this tutorial, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel on YouTube so you never miss any more graphic design or illustrator tutorials in the future. And also, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I think you'll enjoy it. I put all kinds of graphic design and behind the scenes tutorial. Well, not, not much in the way of behind the scenes stuff right now, but we're moving into a new studio space. See the, whoop, the box over that shoulder because I'm emptying out this whole space and moving into a new area. Um, but once we get there, a lot more behind the scenes stuff and live streaming, all kinds of cool stuff like that as well. So go ahead and follow me on, on Instagram. I think you'll really enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. All right, so here we go. Like you saw just a moment ago, this is what we are creating now. I'm just gonna do some housekeeping. I probably should have done this before I started recording. Now here is an example, of course, of what we just saw a moment ago. I am going to shut off this layer though because we are gonna create our very own uh, version of these mountains over this little backdrop. So I'm gonna use the pen tool here. We're gonna create a brand new layer and we're just gonna create three triangles. They can be any size, any orientation, angle, whatever you like. So I'm gonna go like a mountain there, cool. And then I'm gonna go with like, let's go with like a steep mountain or a taller mountain, maybe I should say, in the front and center. In fact, I'm gonna maybe nudge that one upward a little bit. And then I'm gonna go with a little more of like a little baby mountain back here. So I'm gonna go with like a little guy right over here. Voila, something like that looks good, cool. All right, now I'm gonna select all of these mountains and I wanna fill these with kind of a darkish color. And I think I'm gonna uh, scalp that color from the background. So I'm going to unlock the background layer and I'm going to drop down and I'm going to shut off the white, uh, you know, semi-transparent rectangle that was giving it that faded look. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and I think I'm going to sample one of these very dark colors off this stone here. So maybe like a super dark blue, right? That looks pretty cool. Uh, I think that'll give us a good option. And if you want to know what color that is, it is 101A28, right? Can you see that? 101A28. Very cool. We're gonna hit okay. I'm gonna turn that white rectangle back on, lock up that background layer and get back to work on my mountains. Now what I wanna do is offset these triangles. So you can see these triangles, they're three individual shapes. We're gonna group them up in a moment, but as three individual shapes here, we're gonna go object, path, offset path, and I'm gonna offset these. We can turn on preview to see what we're doing, but I'm gonna offset them inward. So I'm gonna go negative 20 pixels and I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. So there we go. You can see it's created new shapes for us. So I wanna select these three shapes now and we're going to merge these together using the Pathfinder panel. So I'm gonna go window, Pathfinder, and I wanna use this option right here. See that? It's even, uh, Illustrator's even telling me this is the merge option. We'll go ahead and merge them together. And that is one shape up there. Great. I'm just going to shut that shape off for a moment. I don't need it right now. I can select the other three shapes here and we can group them up by going object group and just get them kind of, you know, joined together as our little mountain shape. I can shut off the Pathfinder panel. I don't think I need it again. And now what we need to do is kind of determine direction of light. So as you can see the, with the mountains in the back, the sun hits one side and there's kind of a bright side and a dark side to the mountain. So our, our concept here is gonna be relatively simple. We're gonna use the pen tool. And by the way, I, under view, I have smart guides turned on and that's why you're seeing all this stuff. But what it's gonna allow me to do is click and place an anchor point exactly on top of the anchor point at the peak of this mountain. And I can say, all right, my snow is gonna come straight down the middle of the mountain, kind of like that. And then it's gonna be just sort of like streaky, right? It's gonna do its thing over here and be like a little bit of an avalanche or something. And then it'll come up and then back around, voila. And the color of it, of course, is not gonna be dark blue. Instead, I think it's gonna be the color of snow, which last I checked is white. All right, so there's one of the mountains. I'm gonna do it here with the next of our mountains. We're gonna bring it down here. And once more, we can just go ahead and make it kind of nice and and all over the place for this mountain. Great, we got snow peaks over there. And then for this little guy back here, we'll do the same thing. We'll give him his own little, own little bit of snow. Cool, there we go. All right, so we have our sort of snowy peaks. And you can see, in fact, if we just take a peek over here, that kind of looks cool in and of itself. If this was over a white background, uh, you can, you're getting kind of that mountain vibe, right, where the snow is all on one side. But we want to take it a step further. In fact, before we do take it that step further, I do want to let you guys know, if you enjoy what you're seeing here on the channel, go ahead and click that little link that appeared in the top of the video. It's a little circle with the, the letter I in it. 
using that link, you can buy my Photoshop course. It's just like an advanced Photoshop course. It'll teach you how to do all kinds of graphic design related stuff in Photoshop. I really think you'll like it and it helps support what we do here at the channel. I'm working actively on an Illustrator course that'll be coming out at some point. When it does, I'll start promoting it in my videos. But for now, if you like what you see and you're looking to promote the channel or support the channel, I should say, hopefully I do the promotion. Maybe if you share a link, that's cool too. But if you're looking to support the channel, use that link up there and pick up a copy of it yourself. If so, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. But let's get back to this tutorial now. I want to select these three snowy caps. So I'm going to use my selection tool here and hold down my shift key and just select the three caps and I'm going to group them together. Object group. And now that we've done that, we want to come over here and lock up our background group here, these three original triangles. So I'm going to click on the space between the eyeball and that colored bar. And then I'm going to zoom in here because we need the snow to be not quite so clean and perfect. If you want it to be super clean and perfect, hey, leave it the way it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the width tool. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to come down and grab the crystallize tool. And once I have it, I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to change the global brush dimensions probably to like, I don't know, 35 by 35 pixels will probably work for what we've got here. An angle of zero is fine. And we want to reduce the intensity to something like 20, maybe 25. I want low complexity. So I'm going to go one on the complexity level, two on the detail is fine and everything else can remain as it is for default. I'm going to hit OK. And we've got a little brush here. Now we can use this brush and just begin painting over the edges of our snow. And we're going to get a much more complex kind of crazy squiggled path effect. Uh, you know, something that just looks a little bit more randomized. You do want to be careful. If you go too crazy with it, uh, it can it can tend to do kind of eh, not so great things. So maybe sometimes just going through areas and just clicking once will do, you know, give you just what the doctor ordered. In fact, I'm just going to work my way right up the mountain there. That's great. And cool, so that one's probably done. And then I'll just zip through here and get the rest of these finished up real quick. And I should mention, by the way, as you're working through this, if you want to change the size and shape of the brush on the fly, hold on your Alt or Option key and you can click and drag and say like, I need a much smaller, flatter brush. There we go. We can go in there and just mess around with that. Hold on the Alt or Option key, make it a little bit bigger of a brush. We can go through here and just kind of squiggle up and mess up the snow there. Maybe I want to make it an even bigger brush. I can go up and down the mountain this way, but you can see how that's going to kind of, we want to be careful with that, right? Very cool. I think I'll come over here and just click once to just increase that a little bit. And I'll make my brush a little smaller again. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint along this now. And great, once we think we have our snow cap peaks just the way we like them, wonderful. I can just grab my selection tool and just select off of them and just check out what we have. And maybe it's not perfect, but it's good enough to explain what exactly we're doing here. And certainly we've really randomized the edges quite a bit. And by the way, you could do the same exact thing with the mountains. At this point, we want to mask the snow-capped peaks to the mountain shape itself, and we could unlock and, and use this background uh, you know, set of mountains as our mask and get the snow exactly to the edge of the mountains, or we can use that path that we created before, this guy, the guy that's inset 20 pixels. Let's use the shape that's inset here. What I'm going to do is drag this above this layer group in my layers panel. This group, of course, is the snow-capped peaks. And we're going to select both the, the, the inset sort of mountain shape and hold down shift and select the group containing the snow-capped peaks. Whoop, I have my caps key there. I'm going to hold down shift and select them both. And when you have them both activated, we can go object, clipping mask, and choose to make the clipping mask. Or you can use the hotkey command or control 7. So we're going to go ahead and make the clipping mask. And you can see that, boom, it's going to clip our snow-capped peaks to the shape that was on top of them. So that's pretty cool, uh, looking a lot more mountainy. We can see here in the sort of little tiny thumbnail, looks really cool as well. What doesn't really look in place is this big pointy thing here, and also that could kind of stand to be cleaned up a little bit as well. So we have this clip group here in the layers panel. We can add additional masks to that. So let's grab our pen tool up here in the toolbar. And this is where it's very helpful to have your smart guides turned on under view smart guides. And with the pen tool now, we can simply hover over the edge until we see that word path, which means we're going to place our anchor point directly over where that path is. We can come down here and we can just clip away bits of snow that we think shouldn't be there, right? We make that shape and then we select it with the selection tool hit well let's just go edit and choose cut and then we'll go and click on the clip group right click on it by hitting that little circle and open up the transparency panel and we're going to double click here on this sort of blank thumbnail to create a new layer mask and we're going to choose we're going to select the clip button but it's turned on we want to shut that off so it's just going to be solid white and then we're going to go edit paste in front 
and it's gonna paste that shape right in there. You can see it's not clipping anything because the fill of this is white. So we're gonna make sure the fill is solid black. Go ahead and hit OK. And we can see we're just gonna clip away the snow and kind of make it look like it should. We'll do the same thing over here for this other kind of unwieldy bit. Deselect everything, grab the pen tool. Let's just create that shape. Yep, right there over the path, great. And loop-de-loo right over that. And we'll go edit to cut to cut that shape. Whoop, we only cut the, the anchor handle. That's why we want to make sure we select the whole thing with the selection tool. And then edit cut to cut the whole bit. Go back to that clip group, select it. Go back into the layer mask editing mode by selecting that thumbnail. And then, ah, uh, not object, edit, paste in front to paste that shape right in place. And then click on the other thumbnail to get out of mask editing mode. And there we have it. We've created the mountains. Now, it's not quite finished yet because we got this janky edge on the bottom, but that's pretty easy to handle. So we'll just drag a selection over the whole thing, hit Command or Control G to group it up. And then we're going to grab a, a rectangle here. And I'm going to just drag a selection over the bottom, just kind of where I want the base of the mountains to be. Something like that is perfect. And then I'm going to select. And at this point, obviously, you could you, know, you could put text on this, and it could be like a little text-based thing with some mountains sticking out of the top of it. But I'm going to use this as a mask. So I'm going to go Edit, Cut, and we're going to select that layer group here in the Layers panel. So I'm going to select it by hitting the little circle, double-click to add the mask. Uh, we're going to unclip so we show everything, and then just go Edit, Paste in front. It's going to paste that black shape in place. We click here to get back to a regular editing mode. And there we go. We've created these nice, simple mountains in Adobe Illustrator, including their snow-capped peaks. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial. Being able to draw these snow-capped peaks or just mountains in general in Illustrator is so useful. There's so many logo design and illustration applications uh, for mountains, whether simple or complex. Uh, but hey, get started with simple, right? Before you go to the complex, and you'll be a complex before you know it. So yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Again, follow me there on Instagram if you did enjoy this tutorial. And also subscribe to this YouTube channel so you never miss any tutorials in the future for creating these simple mountains here in Adobe Illustrator and, you know, getting started with this nice, simple, clean vector illustration. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.